Thanks for joining our YouTube channel. If you haven't done so already, please click that subscribe button to join our community. That way you get notified each and every week a message pops up. With that being said, we pray that this message encourages and inspires you to take one step closer to Jesus. Hello, hello, what is up, risers? And welcome to all of our guests who are watching online. It is so good to be with you via video. If we have not had the pleasure of meeting, my name is Tina Blunt and I'm the community pastor here at Arise Church. I'm so grateful for technology that allows us to connect, but man, I wish we could be together today. And I know that many of you wish that we could be together as well. As you know, this week has thrown us a few curveballs. But if we're getting real, this year has already thrown us a few curveballs and we're only halfway through the month of January. I mean, think about it. So far, in about 15 days or so, we have experienced a riot at the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. We have watched as our president has been impeached for the second time in four years. And if that weren't enough, earlier this week, our lead pastor had a heart attack. I mean, Jumanji, what is up with that? And even though we are so grateful that he is getting better, it's already been a lot. And now here we are at the very end of a week, I guess Sunday, about to begin a new one, and we have seen a significant uptick in positivity of COVID cases, not only in our community, but here in our church. And it has made more than a few of us um, tease about wanting to go back to 2020. Did you ever think we would say that? Let's go back to 2020. But the thing is, is that 2020 is a known entity, right? We knew what to expect. We knew how to handle it once we got our feet underneath us. But 2021 is, is off to a new, new race for us and, and it's thrown us a few curveballs. And I have to wonder if, if you maybe like me this year today, you're thinking, man, I'd, I'd like to rewind the clock a little bit. I'd, I'd like to go back to an easier time, to a simpler time to a time where I knew how to navigate what was coming at me so that I could be successful and I could win at the game, so to speak. You know, time is a funny thing. And for those who are young, those of you who are watching, who are, let's say, maybe under about 25, boy, you want time to speed up. Like some of you cannot wait till you get those keys in your hand and you can drive your first car. Some of you are waiting for your parents to give the go ahead so that you can start dating. Others of you are, are waiting to go to college. Some of you maybe are waiting to get married. Like you want time to speed up because you're excited about what's to come. And then as you get a little bit older, what you realize is that time moves really, really fast. And oh, how we wish that we could slow it down. How we wish that we could just pause the clock a little bit, maybe even rewind and go back to the things that we loved to do while we could still do them. That the people that we love, to be able to love them a little bit more. Just the places that we've been, the experiences. We wish that we could rewind the clock a little bit. But here's the thing. As humans, we don't have that ability. We don't have the ability to speed it up and we don't have the ability to go backward. The only ability we have is to steward what is in our hands really, really well. We have the ability right now to push off the dock of 2020 and move forward, launch out into the deep end of anything and everything that 2021 is going to bring us. I believe it's going to give us good things, amazing opportunities, places and people to experience, opportunities to serve God, to, to see him do miracles. But the other thing that I think that we're going to be able to experience or we're going to need to endure is we're going to need to endure curveballs, just like we've already seen in the first half of this year. Some of us are going to endure illnesses that we didn't see coming. Some of us are going to endure financial pressures that we weren't prepared for. Some of us are going to endure relationship challenges because curveballs are a part of life. And the reality is, is that if you're a, a, a player in a game, maybe if you're a player in like baseball, a curveball can take you out if you're an average player. But the thing is, is that you and I here at Arise, we're not average players. That is not who we are. In fact, we are extremophiles. 
That's right, I'm gonna say it again. Go ahead and say it with me, extremophiles. You see, in the very first message of this year, Pastor Brennan, his State of the Church address, introduced this word to us. And it's a word that talks about um, an organism, a, an entity, a being that survives in extreme circumstances. Well, we endured extreme circumstances in 2020. And from the looks of it, we're already going to endure some extreme circumstances. But you and I don't just have to endure. We don't have to just survive. You and I have the capacity to thrive in 2021 because we are extremophiles. But let's get practical for a moment. If we're going to learn to do that, if we're going to learn to thrive, we're going to need to learn how to survive the, the, the curveballs that are coming our way. We're going to need to know how to anticipate them, how to navigate them, and how to be successful when they come our way. So I'll be honest with you, I don't know a whole lot about baseball. I'm more of a football girl. So I reached out to a couple of friends who I know are baseball players or former players or fans, and I said, all right, talk to me about the curve ball. How do you learn how to hit the curveball? How do you learn how to win and be a great player? Because here's the thing, if you and I want to be all that we can be, some of us might have to push past our comfort zones and learn something and learn to do something that we've never done before. And what I learned is that there's three significant things that you have to do and I have to do in order to be able to navigate a curveball. And the first one is this, we have to make a decision to play the game. We have to make a decision that we're going to get in the game, that we are going to suit up, that we're going to put the gear on, that we're going to step out, and that we are going to play the game. You know, I love the scripture that actually says this. It's in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 and 25, and it says, Do you not know that in a race all runners run? Do you not know that in a race all runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the game goes into strict training, but they do it to get a crown that will last. We do it to get a crown that will not last, excuse me, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Now, I love this passage so much because God is reminding us through Paul that in order to play the game, you got to get in the game. Some of us have been resting. We, we've been recovering. Maybe we've gone through an injury, and so we've been sitting out of life a little bit because of what the last year or the last five years or even the last decade has thrown at us. Maybe we, we took a hit and, and it wounded us, and so we've been sitting out. But I love this passage so much because it says you can't play as long as you're sitting in the stands. I can dance to the music. I can eat a hot dog, but I've got to get in the game. And God has something for you to do on this earth that he created specifically for you. Friends, we've got to get in the game. Now, the second thing that we have to do that our friends taught me about is that when you're standing at the plate, right, you've decided to get in the game, you're all suited up, you got your hat on, you're looking good, you're feeling strong, and you're standing at the plate, when you're doing that, don't look for the curveball. You see, what a lot of us do is that we try to anticipate what's going to happen, right? So rather than just standing up and saying, okay, I'm going to take what comes at me, what we try to do is we try to watch for the curveball. Some of us, um, a little more spiritual, like to say it this way. We look for the enemy underneath every table. We look for the enemy underneath every desk. We look for the enemy around every corner. And as long as we're looking for the enemy, we won't be able to keep our eyes on God. But scripture tells us this. Scripture tells us in Hebrews 12, 1, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us fixing our eyes on Jesus the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith for the joy set before him he endured the cross scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart 
Friends, we have to fix our eyes on Jesus. We have to fix our eyes on him. And we've got to trust that when the curveball is coming, we're going to know what to do with it. Well, that brings us to point number three. And it was the final point that my friends who love the game of baseball taught me that we need to do when we are navigating a curveball. Here's the thing they said. They said that you've got to keep your hands back right? Get ready. You got to keep your hands back. You got to keep your body low and you got to let the ball come to you. So often when a curveball is coming, we preempt a swing. We swing too soon. We feel like, oh, I think I see it coming. I think that, that I might lose my job. <clears throat> I got a bit of a tickle. Maybe, maybe I feel like I've got a sore throat going on. Wow, my, my husband didn't speak to me so nicely. Maybe he's not happy in our marriage. Oh, my kids didn't tell me that thing that they should have told me. Maybe they're hanging out with the wrong people and they're going astray. Like, like we preempt, we preempt the swing. And when that happens, either we're going to strike out or we're going to cause a foul. We're going to cause a foul, and, and we can't do that. We've got to trust in the Lord. I, I love this scripture in Psalm. It's in Psalm 27, 14, and it says it so well. It says, wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Man, that's hard to do sometimes, isn't it? Right? Especially when we think there's something I can do about this. And make no mistake, there is a moment of swinging. There is a moment where we do go ahead and take the swing, but you got to trust the timing of the Holy Spirit. You know, in, in baseball, coaches will say this to players. They'll say to them, trust your hand. They'll trust your hand. And what they mean by that is that when you trust your hand, it's saying trust your instincts, trust your training. Now, I will tell you that as a woman, maybe you as a man, sometimes my instincts will get me into complete trouble. But I want to say to you as your coach today, trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Trust the Holy Spirit in you to guide you, to lead you, to say to you, this is the moment that you take the swing and this is the moment where you stand back and you let me handle it. You see, the reality is, is that you and I have to get ready to play the game. We got to get ready. 2021 is here and it's not going anywhere. 2020 has come and gone and there's been some kinetic energy to it. There's some things from 2020 that have carried over into our lives and we couldn't have stopped them if we wanted to. And now that we're here in 2021, there's some things that have come into our lives that, man, I'd like to knock out of the park. So can I tell you this? This year, right now, get in the game. Go ahead, get in the game. Watch and keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't focus on the curve boss. Keep your eyes on him. And then keep your hands low, keep yourself tucked in, get back. And when he says, go swing, swing. And you know why you wanna swing? Here's why, one more scripture for you today. Because there's this fantastic passage and it's found in 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and it says this. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Do you love him? Do you know him today? Because I'll tell you, that's where the game begins. It begins with knowing him. Some of you have made it to the ballpark. You've made it to this video, but if you were being honest, you might say, no, Pastor Tina, I, I don't know him. Before we leave, I, I can't end this broadcast without giving you the opportunity to come to know him as your savior. And for those of you who do know him, hang on because I've got another prayer just for you. But if you're with us today and, and you've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior, all you have to do is admit to him that you're a sinner and that you are in need of his saving grace. Go ahead and just do it with me right now. Say to him, Father, I'm a sinner. I'm sitting in the stands of life and I don't know you, but I want you to be my coach. I, I don't even know who this Holy Spirit is, but I want to know him too. Would you forgive me of my sins? Would you come into my life and would you lead me? And can I tell you that if you just did that, there is a crowd in heaven that is going wild right now. They are celebrating you and they are celebrating that you who were once separated from God has placed their faith in Jesus Christ and the work of the cross and they've come home. But now let's talk about you, friend. Let's talk about you who might be playing life safe. 
who might be um, sitting on the sidelines, who might be nursing an injury. Trust God to be your healer. Trust Him to be your provider. Trust Him to be your coach and your Savior. He is so good at it. He loves you and He has a plan for you. So go ahead, pick up the bat, and let's get in the game. Thank you for watching this message today. We ask that you hit the subscribe button and share this message on all social platforms. Man, we are hoping that you were encouraged and blessed by what you heard. And we cannot wait to see you next time.